Oh my goodness, there's so much to see. Oh, it's so beautiful, these channels. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, look at all the work surface as well. <laughs> there's so much to look at. I don't know what to look at first. It's beautiful. Absolutely <gasps> I've got fridge envy. Okay. Bubba gum. Awesome. Is that the shower? No, this is it. So, oh my gosh, look at that. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, this is the, the cow that Alison did. She painted this herself. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Okay, the van that everybody's, the van, the school bus that everybody's been talking about as the most glamorous and beautiful is right behind us. And we're going to talk to, what's your name? Simon. Simon, who is the man behind the bus. Behind the bus indeed, yes. Yeah. How did you, why did you pick a bus, first of all? Uh, that's be Alison's uh, doing, really. Uh, we have had the Volkswagens in the previous past and we love, <laughs> love that. But we wanted to look at retiring and downsizing and everything getting away from bricks and sticks yeah so then the conversation led to well, in the ideal world what would you have and we went back to school american school buses which alison liked a few years ago but we didn't really pursue it mm. i started then researching school buses what could we get could we find what we needed and the crown supercoach was the we all have the the ultimate one mm. and then what we can actually afford uh, so the, the supercoach is was up here on my research, mm. but virtually impossible to find in America, let alone actually in the UK. Uh, so the realistic was going to be a normal American school bus that everyone recognised with the, with the bonnets and mm. the seats and thing. Uh, we were due to go to New York and look at that kind of bus, but then we got sort of a, a tip off, shall we say. I had seen this bus in uh, and some photographs in a museum, uh, therefore I thought it's over here somewhere yeah. we then tracked it down to actually the owner who had it wow. whose plan was he had it for about four years I think and his plan was to turn it into a toy hauler yeah. uh, the reason that he was wanting to use this bus is some of the physical uh, dimensions and where certain things are placed for example the engine is a mid-engine bus which means if you're going to put a car in the back of a vehicle having an engine here is a massive bonus because you haven't got to deal with moving all that at the very back. Yeah. Uh, it's also an aluminium bus, so it's extremely lighter than what it looks like. Yeah. So his plan was for that. Our plan was to do this. So he's an absolutely lovely guy. And after some negotiations and chit chat, he quite liked our idea of living on it. And eventually then we came to an arrangement of to buy it. Yeah. It got delivered to us in, on, sorry, on January the 12th, 2020. Wow. <laughs> just before the D-Day yeah. of what was coming, nobody was aware of. So a few months after it arrived, lockdown hits. Therefore, we couldn't get a handle on what we really, in our minds, we were going to buy in this, we're going to buy this, we're going to do that. So it changed the sort of plan of how we're going to build this because obviously everything shut down. So we decided to head down the more recycled route of pallet wood, scaffold bars, scaffold wood, things that were to hand and easily accessible, even in the lockdown, we could get certain things, and, and marketplace, where you could actually ask and, and, and get them apart, because all the shops were actually in shutdown. <coughs> from, so from that, we are headed down that route. Uh, and from that, is good or bad is why it's like it is on the inside. Now the outside is exactly as it came. Yeah. We were, in the UK, we don't have the school bus system, so if this is in America, you have to take the word school bus off, you have to take, uh, you have to change the colour in some states, you have to take the uh, technical thing, which is on this particular bus, is called a sweeper. Uh, other buses have them on the side where it's a hexagon, I believe, and it swings out when the children are getting off. This particular bus has got a, a sweeper, which in itself is quite an interesting feature. So, the bus itself is 36 feet long, if it was the other type, which is the type we thought we was getting, would be more 41 feet long, which is a, quite a bit, bit more. Having the, this style of bus also is lots easier to drive and deal with than the, the longer version, especially with campsites and, and restrictions there. Uh, it's a lovely shape. It looks like it's from the 1940s. It was designed 1948 from my research, but this is a 1980 bus. So they didn't change the design all the way through. So the exterior is a almost exactly how it was when it was in service from Sacramento which as our researchers showed you it was owned by the Embry company 
and this bus worked in Sacramento. Wow. When we got it, we had a couple of things we needed to address. One was a, an engine question, and Alison managed to speak to the mechanic that worked on this bus in that company. Wow. We also then, through the same uh, website, spoke to the driver of this bus, because they've all got their own numbers, and this is 365E. Uh, Alison then spoke to the driver, said, I drove that bus uh, when I was employed there. So there's lots of little story pieces that it's just absolutely lovely. Uh, it is a big Detroit diesel, mid-engine, but it's a five-speed gearbox. The reason it's a five-speed gearbox, not an automatic, is because of what I'm told again is Sacramento is extremely hilly and they prefer the gearbox because of low end torque rather than it's a manual, uh, sorry, an automatic that would be stopping and starting. What do you think you'd have done differently if COVID hadn't hit when it did and you had every resource at your fingertips? Would you have spent more? Would you have done it more off the peg? Do you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> We'd have done exactly the same, Perfect. to be honest. Purely because we are that minded, Alison's quite crafty, and I don't mean crafty, <laughs> I mean, you know, Talented. resourceful. Uh, and whether you use the word type, I would much rather upcycle, recycle. When you go through, uh, I'm not a wood person, I'm not a mechanic -y mechanic, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a builder, just the regular guy that really wanted a vehicle, and it just happened to be a chain of events brought it to us and a wonderful chain of events brought it to us, it really was. It was then, we'll just put it how we want it. It wasn't, we're not, it's not for sale, it's not, it's not to impress anyone. This is to create um, our retirement nest, if that makes sense. And hopefully when you walk around and see the little bits and bobs, and I know not everything's perfect, but if anything goes wrong, I can actually go and fix it within minutes. I ain't got to ring a plumber because I did the plumbing. I ain't got to ring an electrician because I did that. Uh, I am the architect. So yeah, but I was driven and guided by Alison. She wanted it, this, this, this. And when you go on board, the first thing you'll probably see is a yellow fridge, <coughs> smeg fridge. That was the only thing Alison really said at the beginning was, I'll do the bus thing, but I really want a smeg fridge. I've never had one. And I went, if you can find one, I'll make it work with what I got. So no. you will see some unusual things. You say it was a series of events that brought you to this, but I okay. think very much, actually, it was an intention. You, you set your mind exactly what, on what you wanted, and then things came yeah. around to give you that. It, it's that. quite possible, you know. You, you, uh, you put it out there and it comes back in twofold if you, you know, karma. Mm. I don't know what words to use in regards to that, but it, it certainly... Every step of the way, we just thought, could we be this lucky? Could it actually be that bus? Could it actually be, could we, will the gentleman actually want to sell it? And each step was, we was more and more excited. And obviously, that's it. But even when we got it, that excitement never, it didn't disappear. Yeah. It actually, the momentum got even more. So having the, the furlough, yeah. and I agree completely, we wouldn't have really changed anything. Yeah. I'd have still took, the cabinet that I loved at home, which you'll see underneath underneath the TV, and I still put that in the bus somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and I'd have still followed how Alison wanted it to sort of feel on the inside. So, in America, there's, there's certain laws: you cannot overtake a yellow school bus while the red lights are on. So, in the UK, I'm allowed to keep the red lights on because it doesn't affect anything. It also means I get to keep what's called the sweeper. This seems to be the most popular thing of the show. So. What you're going to see is, and imagine the bus has pulled up at a school and the children are about to exit the bus. The red lights come on off the top, and the sweeper is then engaged. That stops the children, if I go this way just for a second, it stops the children when coming off the bus, running straight across. It means they have to actually come all the way up to here, which then gives what's called line of sight, which means any vehicles coming past, it stops them being killed. When the bus drives away, that will retract. Uh, it only comes out when the bus is stationary with the red lights on. Okay, so the engine is a 671 Detroit diesel. Screaming diesel, as some people called. This is a naturally aspirated, which means it's a non-turbo. Uh, it's also pancake, which means all six cylinders on this vehicle are facing flat and facing me through this hatch. The mechanics would, if they were working on the pistons, would come to this hatch and work on this side uh, with as much access as they require to get in there with all the equipment. 
if we're on the other side you'll see that's where all the fluids and oils are dealt with so you could have two mechanics working on this vehicle simultaneously without bumping into your thought you've also then got a hatch in our kitchen which you'll see which is where the starter motor and the burrow is again you could have a mechanic working on it and the reason being is while the vehicles are off the road they're not making any money so the quicker they get turned around the quicker they get put back onto the road and more do the service that they've been designed to do favourite bits about your conversion? What, what do you like best? To be honest, there's a multiple range of different things for different reasons. Uh, as we was going through the, the process, the learning process, I uh, word of YouTube, watching what other people have done, taking their concept and put it into what we could get over here. We are guilty of watching a lot of American bus conversions and not so much of the English van lifers. And for that, I apologize. However, as I had this vehicle, I needed as much insight, research, uh, information, and YouTube is fantastic for that. Um, but the, the other thing you get involved is into their lives as well. It isn't about the bus. It's not even about the bus. It's about the people that are living in that bus or even creating a different life. And they're just using this as a tool. So the bus actually, as beautiful as it is, is only a tool so that we can do a bit more of what we want to do and not do what everybody else wants to do, if that makes any sense. This was, a, this was a, an item in a house. Uh, I really, what I wanted to incorporate, incorporate it into the bus for multiple reasons. One, it is aesthetically quite nice. Two, the number plates, the American number plates fit inside the drawers really well. Three, it's not got rollers on the drawers and it might not make sense to people, but when you're driving a vehicle that goes from left to right and Drawers with wheels move out a lot more. These you actually have to get hold of and shove and open. And it makes, uh, rather than losing all your products on the floor, slightly stiffer uh, uh, drawers, you don't have that same problem. The other thing we did when we originally built the bus, we had a dining area here. We kept two of the seats. Then we made them face to face. So it looked like an American diner. It was fantastic. We had the table from Ikea. Wicked. Three months after living in this space, we asked the question, do we actually use that sitting area? Which was a no. So Alison said, let's have some more space. So we went with a larger kitchen space. So we have more cupboards. The other thing you may notice, there's no cooktop on this side. And as we are wanting to go full time in the vehicle and potentially use this as a workstation, not having to clean a cooker that's got grease from cooking on all the time, we went with this large space with a breakfast bar uh, so that we can have a laptop open, you're looking out the window, or Alison could be sewing something on the sewing machine, and we've not got the cooking area there. We've got an induction, which we can put on any side and plug into the sockets. So the power, at the moment, I've only got two solar panels at 320 each. Give me, a, I think it's, a, <coughs> excuse me, 640, into 550 amp hours. My um, inverter is 4000 pure, pure sign, which is, at the moment, from what we're seeing using the Victron system and the information that comes through that, is giving us everything we need without switching on the generator or plugging into shore power. This is a full 
full size fridge uh, of 240. It is the one thing Alison requested on the build was, I've never had a Smeg fridge, I would love to have one. I got the bus, she gets the fridge. Mm -hmm. I can live with that. But it also then gives us a vast amount of storage for food. So if you are boondocking, as it's sometimes called, or camping for a long period, you can get a sufficient in there and the solar is working really well in keeping that where it's at. Um, there is other 240 volt sockets with USBs in. Um, what I did was instead of putting them down at the bottom where you plug in and lean over, I've used the trunking of the bus and all I did is where the lights used to sit, like that one there, enlarge, put the back, put the back boxes, run the cable in and it works really well. To, to use that rather than making large channels. It was already there. Uh, some on that side, some on that side. So one of the things, one of the features you may notice as you come down, because we've got so many windows, it seems silly then to block them off. So where the walls join the bus, uh, they land between every window. So if we have to move a wall, the window will still operate in its same process. The other thing I didn't want to do is put cabinets here which would take your peripheral vision as you walk through, it makes the place look smaller. Uh, as you stand at the front, look down the, the bus, the door in the centre also gives you that elongated vision. So again, it looks bigger. When you're living in a small space, the psychological side of it feeling bigger does make it feel bigger. So we do have the grandchildren come over and they absolutely love the bus, as you'd imagine. And this is where they stay. It does pull straight forward out, it ratchets and uh, ratchets is flat, it's sufficient for two little girls to sleep on and uh, they can watch a DVD until their heart's content. Uh, they do absolutely love this, being in this space, um, yeah. it's really nice. Yeah. So it's not a special uh, kitchen in any way shape whatsoever, it was free off Marketplace, we just had to go and fetch it and dismantle it for the lady and we take, took out the bits we required. Uh, as you can see, the only modification I've made is a tiny piece of wood across the front to stop any of the trays that we've got in here exiting out. While, in, while driving, Alison's bungees come in extremely handy to lock the doors. So what you've got here, and there was four originally on the bus when we got it, are 12 volt TVs that were all linked together. Again, from the research that we found out, that while this was in the museum, they would have school children come from school and they would run a video through here of school buses and historical vehicles and all the children will be sat in the seats as a school bus inside the museum watching videos on the top screen. When we received it they were still in there. Uh, it does work through the old video system. We have not actually got them wired up at the moment but we haven't also we haven't taken them out. We have taken the two at the back where we've, we've changed things but at the moment these two are still here. <clears throat> so as you come through the bus we come to the separation section again the wood is, is pallet wood, the door was out of a skip. Uh, we were still in lockdown, so we was making use of whatever we'd got available. Uh, and I'm not got a problem with that. It is what it is. It, it says what it says on the box, and you get what you see. So when it comes to the toilet, it's just a basic camping toilet. There's no airs or graces. Uh, you use it like any other toilet. You just have to deal with the other side of it, which <laughs> I have to do, <laughs> Alison won't do that. We do have a small sink, uh, obviously. And again, I made the, the, the box out of um, scaffold bar, a scaffold wood, sorry. Um, it's a nice little, to get it the right height, the right depth. And again, we had that to hand, so we use that. Come a little further. So as we come into this section, which is the back end of the bus where the bed bedroom area is, Again, it's, it's recycled. The bed was gifted to us free. Uh, the sacks that you see on the walls, we had left over from something else we did. These are off our wardrobe. Uh, this is another piece of, of scaffold, scaffolding that I made my shelf out of. Uh, just rather than stop and wait, we just wanted to keep rolling. And we would be rolling with whatever we found or whatever was available at the time. And as it's for us, it's not for, it's not a sale product, it's not a sale project, it's, are we happy with that? Yes, we were happy with that. One of the nicest features of the exterior of this bus is its back end. <laughs> I may be obsessed with it in a, in a kind of 
um, car kind of fashion. Mm. No other, no other way but just know it. <laughs> the reason being is it's just really shapely. Uh, and I remember when I first saw it up against the building, covered in muck, and there was a gate, and I just looked at the back, and I probably stood there for a few minutes going, that's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and you may disagree, and that's absolutely fine, but I absolutely love the way it looks. As you can see, it's extremely voluptuous in its roundness. <laughs> uh, it has the exhaust that comes through the bumper, which for me absolutely looked fantastic. And when I then realised it's got a boot, because at that point I didn't know the engine was in the middle, only when I accessed the back and opened my boot up to realise I've got a huge back end, wow. which lends itself to living in the bus and carrying certain things they're not under your feet in the bus you can calculate you've got a garage um, so that technically is my garage i've got tools i've got spares uh, i've got a full-size ladder i've got a baby ladder i've got a full box of tools i've got a spare diesel we also hold the generator the um, diesel heater for the bedroom in the back and even though it's under the bed People say when they hear these diesels clicking away, it's annoying. It's like a little heartbeat. I absolutely love the little tick, tick, tick. Now, I don't know if that annoys Alison, <laughs> but I just feel it's got a little heartbeat. Just for anybody who's watching this, this weekend, this whole statement on this, 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 this here encapsulates how I feel for the whole weekend. The best things in life are people the memories it's absolutely been a wonderful weekend thank you you are thank you so much for showing us around your beautiful bus thanks Alison's so talented <laughs> she's yeah. amazing you know. but thank you for taking the time what an amazing weekend we've had you're absolutely welcome yeah. it's been lovely to have people actually interested in something we've spent this much time on in the back garden yeah. and and so yeah thank you for asking no oh, my pleasure you make me cry now <laughs> Thank you.